Okay, so hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to discuss a very cool problem from yesterday's Code Chef Div3 round. So this problem is total overlap, and this was like the hardest problem in yesterday's Code Chef contest. I'm judging this because there were uh, very few submissions on this problem. So yeah, let me just quickly explain to you what the problem statement says. So you have two sets of segments on a line, and these are A and B. Then A contains n line segments and similarly B also contains m line segments, right? And each of these line segments are of the form L and R. So basically the line segment starts at L and ends at R. So what you need to do is you need to find this summation. Now if the summation looks a little overwhelming, uh, I can quickly explain what this means. So you can first of all read it. Uh, I'll give you 10 seconds or let's say 5. So yeah, this is what you need to find and I'll quickly explain to you what this means. So let's say you have uh, the set A and these are the line segments from set A. Let's say we have two line segments right now and then let, uh, let us consider the set B. So these may be the two line segments from set B, okay. So what you need to do is you need to consider every pair IJ i comma j such that the ith line segment is from uh, the set a and the jth line segment is from the set b and for all such pairs you need to find their intersection let's say i chose the ith line segment as this one and the jth line segment as this one so what will be the intersection the intersection will be this right so i need to consider all these pairs ij and i need to add up the length of the line segment that is formed uh, when we take the intersection of these two line segments, the ith line segment and the jth line segment, where the ith line segment is from set A and the jth line segment is from set B. Okay, so this is basically the problem statement. So I won't be going, uh, I, I mean, I won't be discussing the brute force approach to this one. So I will quickly explain to you the final solution. So one thing to observe here is, you know, uh, these L and R are in the range 1 to 10 to the power 8. So obviously you cannot do anything which you know uh, takes up a memory of a length uh, let's say uh, order 10 to the power 8 or let's say it takes up a time of order 10 to the power 8 because that won't you know work because uh, we have a time limit of one second I guess yeah we have a time limit of one second and we have so many test cases as well right so we need to come up with a solution that is something like order of n plus m or let's say order of n log n or n log m something like that that will definitely work. But anything which, uh, you know, which focuses on this, uh, these constraints, uh, I mean 1 to 10 to the power 8, I mean if you're doing anything that uh, relates to this, then it won't work. So what you need to see, so one observation to make here is that, you know, although these L and R values can be from 1 to 10 to the power 8, the total number of distinct points on this whole number line are not so many. So how can we see this? Because we have... Uh, we have n line segments of set A and we have m line segments of set B and both of these can be up to 10 to the power 5 right so considering a line segment it will be of the form L and R right so these are two points so for all these 10 to the power 5 uh, line segments we will have 2 into 10 to the power 5 points for set A now this is obviously the worst case uh, there might be lesser points as well and 2 into 10 to the power 5 points for set B so what you can see is that you know the total number of distinct points that we have are not so many they are at max 4 into 10 to the power 5 right so if we can you know come up with an algorithm that focuses on this thing the property that the distinct points are not so many then we can you know be sure that our algorithm will work fine now another observation to make here is that you know if we have two points on this whole number line x and y and these are distinct obviously and we don't have any other points in between so what are these points these points are nothing but some some may be l's and some may be r's right so if there are no points in between these two points and if there is a line segment that has not ended till this point then we can say that that particular line segment will not end till this point right because to end a line segment we need an r right and we have already said that in between x and y there are no points so that simply states that uh, any line that has you know crossed this point can never end before this point right so that is one observation 
secondly what you can say is that if this is x and if this is y and uh, let me just pick up another color and let's say you have a line segments of a and you have b line segments of b so what you can say is that in between these two points which are distinct obviously no li no line segment from these uh, b line segments and no line segment from these a line segment can end right so what we can say that the total summation that gets added to our uh, final answer will be will be simply a into b into y minus x y minus x is the length of the segment and there are a line segments uh, within these two points and there are b line segments within these two points right so for every line segment from the set a there are basically b line segments with which it intersects right and we have a of these so we will multiply it with a and we will multiply it with the line segments uh, length right so that is basically the idea so in order to solve this problem what you can do is you can consider all these line segments l and r and you can consider their points as you know uh, separately you can consider the l point separately and you can consider the r point separately and what you can do is you can pick up all these points and put it into a vector and sort them so then what you will have is you will have something like this you will have l l r or let's say r again l r so these will be the points on your number line obviously uh, the difference between them can be distinct this can be distinct so these will be all the points and obviously at the same uh, point you can have multiple points as well but the total number of distinct points will not exceed 4 into 10 to the power 5 right now what you can do is let us consider these points let us consider the a set and in that we will have many l's and we will have many r's so what we'll do is for every l let's say i assign it a number 1 and for every r i assign it a number 2 Similarly, for, for the B set, uh, for every L, I assign a number 3 and for every R, I assign a number 4, right? So, what you can say is that if there are two distinct points such that there are no points in between them, then what can you say? That if there are A line segments of set A and B line segments of set B, then your final answer for this, this part will be Y minus X into A into B right so what i do now is that whenever i'm on a point let's say i'm on a point this and this point basically has one l of the set a so what i do is i increase my a by one and if it was a point of let's say if it was a r point from the set a then i decrease my a by one what is a here a is simply the line segments that have not ended till this point from the set a obviously and similarly if this is an L from the set B then what I do is then I increase my B by 1 and if this is an R from the set B then I decrease my B by 1 right and what I'll do is I'll simply sort all these points and then I'll iterate from uh, the very first point to the very last point and I'll keep adding my answer like this so I'll quickly show you my code for this problem and in case you want me to discuss uh, the sample test here, I can discuss that as well. So this is basically like the sample one. I can consider a smaller version of this. Let's say we take this set. So we basically have n equals to 2 and m equals to 1. And the line segments are 5 comma 6, 6 comma 8 and we have 5 comma 8. Right now, how will these points look on a number line? That is, you know, what you have to consider. Like this five is an L point, this six is an R point. Now this six is an L point, and this eight is an R point. Right. Similarly, this five is an L point, and this eight is an R point. But this L point is of the set A, and this L point is of the set B. Right. So what did I tell you that if it is a L point of set A then we put a 1 at that point and if it is an R point from the set A then we put a 2 at that point. Similarly if it is an L point from set B then we put a 3 at that point and if it is an R point from the set B then we put a 4 at that point. So what will happen here is that you know we will have first of all we will have 5 then we will have 6 then we will have another 6 
then we'll have uh, an eight, right? And we also had two fives. So uh, what else do we have? We have two eights also. Now this will be one. This will be three. This will be two, and this will be one again because this is a one. Then again, this eight will be a two, and this eight will be a four. Right. So what happens is that whenever I come to this point, I increase my a by one and I increase my b by one because this is one and this is three. That means they both are l points. So now my a equals to one, and now my b equals to one, right? And when I get to this point, I add to my answer. What will I add to my answer? I will add a into b into y minus x. And what is y here? Y is six and x is five, right? So we'll add this, and this will have what will be the answer for this? It will be simply one into one into one, and this will be one. So we've added one to our answer finally. Then what happens? Then you come to this point. So then you see that there is a one at here. So you increase a by a again by one. So it becomes two, and then you see that we have a two here. Now what we do is we decrease our a by one again. So it becomes one again. Why did we do that? Because whenever we encounter a one, we increase our a by one. And whenever we encounter a two, we decrease our a by one. Similarly, whenever we encounter a three, we increase our b by one. And whenever we encounter a four, we decrease our b by one. Right. So again, when when you get to this eight, you will again add this to your answer. One into one into eight minus five. Right. Sorry, eight minus five. Uh, it should not be eight minus five. It should be eight minus six because the previous point was eight six. Right. Then you get two here. So at the end, your answer will be three. and i think it matches yeah it does so i'll quickly show you my code for this problem so what i'm doing is i've taken the test cases as the input then i've taken n and m as the input and then i've taken the i mean the pairs of the line segments as a and b and then what i've done is then i've created a vector of points now why have i have i taken a pair this is because uh, the first index will tell me uh what is the location of that point and the second index will tell me what type of a point it is so if it was an l point from the set a i mark a one at one at that position if it was an an r from the set a i mark a, i mark a two at that position right so similarly for the set b if it was an l from the set b i mark a three at that position and if it was an r from the set b then i mark a four at that position so i've considered the previous value as zero uh, although the previous i mean all the points are starting from one as you can see but since both are a and b are zero here so it won't affect our answer right so this is what i'm doing i have simply sorted all these points and then i start iterating from the very start so whenever i uh, come to a distinct point what i do is i add to my answer x minus previous value into a into b right and then what happens is then you can see that uh, you know uh, if i am on the same point i keep uh, you know changing my a's and b's and whenever i encounter another distinct point then i break i mean i continue so it comes to that new point and then eventually i print the answer so yeah that was it for this video guys in case you liked the video uh, please press the like button and in case you are new to this channel then do subscribe i regularly post educational content uh, with respect to competitive programming obviously so yeah Goodbye then.